As with interpretation of any extremity x-ray, we will firstly review normal alignment. If a line is drawn through the neck and head of the radius, this should bisect the capitellum on all views. This is the radiocapitellar line on the AP projection. This is the radiocapitellar line on the lateral projection. Loss of normal orientation on the radiocapitellar line is a sign of radial head subluxation or dislocation. This is a commonly seen association with a fracture of the ulna. This combination has been named Montegia fracture dislocation. The anterior humeral line is a line drawn along the anterior cortex of the distal humerus through the elbow joint. On a true lateral x-ray, one third of the capitellum should lie anterior to this line. Supracondylar fractures of the distal humerus are often difficult to visualise. Loss of the normal alignment, with less than one third of the capitellum anterior to the anterior humeral line, is often an important sign in the diagnosis of a supracondylar fracture with posterior displacement or angulation. Supracondylar fractures of the distal humerus are the most common fractures in children aged 4 to 8. Once alignment has been assessed, the bones are the next region to be interpreted for signs of a fracture. As previously discussed, supracondylar fractures of the distal humerus are the most common fracture in children between the ages of 4 and 8. Look for cortical disruption or a linear lucency. Sometimes these are difficult to visualise. The secondary signs of loss of the normal anterior humeral line alignment and signs of a hemarthrosis are often important in establishing a plain film diagnosis. Lateral condylar fractures are a less common fracture in the paediatric population. These appear as a linear lucency and or cortical disruption involving the lateral condyle. In adults, the most common injury of the elbow is a fracture of the radial head. These appear as cortical disruption, linear lucency or impaction sclerosis. It is important to assess for intra-articular extension. If minimally displaced, these fractures can be difficult to visualise. The radial head capitellar view is often useful. Usually these fractures are within the joint capsule and associated with a hemarthrosis. Fractures of the coronoid process are less frequent in adults, but are commonly overlooked due to superimposition of the fracture fragment with overlying bones. They're usually associated with a hemarthrosis. Once the bones have been assessed, the soft tissues need to be evaluated to complete X-ray interpretation. Signs of a joint effusion or hemarthrosis are elevation of the anterior fat pad and visualisation of the posterior fat pad. The anterior fat pad is usually closely applied to the anterior cortex of the distal humerus. Elevation of the anterior fat pad is referred to as the sail sign, where the fat pad has the appearance of a mainsail on a yacht. The posterior fat pad should not be visualised in a normal radiograph. The presence of the posterior fat pad is diagnostic of a joint effusion or hemarthrosis. As previously mentioned, fractures around the elbow may be very difficult to visualise if minimally displaced. In the setting of trauma, if there are signs of a hemarthrosis, an occult fracture needs to be considered until proven otherwise. In an adult, this should be considered to be a radial head fracture, with clinical follow-up to reassess. In a child, this should be considered to be a supracondylar fracture with clinical follow-up to reassess. This concludes our module on elbow x-ray interpretation. We've reviewed normal x-ray techniques and anatomy. In summary, x-ray interpretation of the elbow involves assessment of alignment, bones and soft tissues. The radiocapitellar line and anterior humeral lines are used to assess alignment. The most common injuries in the paediatric population are supracondylar fractures followed by lateral condylar fractures. 
In adults, the most common injuries are radial head fractures followed by coronoid process fractures. In assessment of the soft tissues, it is important to look for fat pad signs of a hemarthrosis, which may be the only sign of an occult fracture of the elbow.